Hi everyone and welcome. I'm Diane and my passion is painting and creating nature-inspired watercolours in my studio, which are easy for you to do too. I share all my paintings with you on YouTube and on our website, dianeanton.com, you can find free downloadable sketches for all the videos to help you make the most of your painting journey. And if you'd like a little bit more, we also have channel memberships with loads of perks for you to enjoy. So welcome on board, click subscribe and turn on notifications and let's learn to paint watercolour. Hi everyone, Diane here, welcome to my studio, hope everyone's well today. Another cold one from uh, Brittany, but uh, let's hope you're in a warmer situation than me. Um, today I'm going to paint a beach scene with some sand dunes, some sunshine and a couple of little boats in the distance, um, just indicating them um, by showing their sails, nothing too dramatic or demanding. Um, and uh, first of all, I just wanted to go through the different implements that I'm going to be using for this. And of course, while I was walking the dog this morning, I was thinking to myself, am I going to be able to paint while I'm away in England when I won't be able to take all of my gubbins with me? Can I possibly paint with just a paint box and a sheet of paper and of course a camera? And I'm not sure about that because I realise how lucky I am to have all these things that I do have in the studio here to hand, no matter what I want to do and no matter what I want to use. So I do highly recommend everybody, even if you haven't got a room, do at least get yourself a trolley from Ikea or something and keep all your stuff in one place so that you can, um, you know, just reach out and grab something like this. This is a colour shaper. You can get these from Amazon. They're silicon tipped. They're not terribly expensive. They're not really meant for watercolour painting, but they are really good for putting masking fluid on. Because as you know, masking fluid ruins brushes. Doesn't matter if you wash it off straight away. Doesn't matter if you put um, uh, detergent, you know, washing up liquid or whatever, or soap on it first to protect the hairs. It doesn't, it doesn't work. You ruin the brush sooner or later, very soon actually. The brush hairs just give up the ghost. They say that I don't like this latex stuff, whatever. Um, but these color shapers are much better for that and you can get them on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. So I just reached out and found one of those which I'm going to use to do my boats. And the other things that I'm using here, apart from my large brush, I've got a size 14 round nylon brush here. This one's from Drawwell, my Japanese suppliers, but any large nylon brush will do. It doesn't have to have my name on it. Um, and this is a sword liner or a dagger brush or whatever you want to call it. It's good for flicky things. So I might use that for the, um, what do you call them? It's the grasses in the painting, in the foreground of, on the sand dunes. This is my favorite toothbrush. Um, everybody needs to spatter things from time to time and you need a suitable toothbrush. And although any toothbrush will do, I really like this one because it's not too soft. I have this one as well, which is much softer and it gives a different effect, but for most of my spattering, I like this one, which is a relatively stiff um, toothbrush, which I don't use on my teeth anymore. So those can go over there and wait their turn. Um, I've got a pencil to, to draw with, and here is a piece of candle, um, which I used yesterday in another painting, um, which hasn't gone up yet, um, where I was doing tree trunks and things. Um, this I might use this um, to indicate some of the surf lines you know on the sea where the white stands out because that uh, that helps with with giving that effect and i've got my bottle of daniel smith masking fluid here which i'll use for the sails just because why not and then my colors i've got cobalt blue caribbean blue windsor violet or quinacridone violet it's all the same um, a nice warm yellow like um, cadmium yellow or Windsor yellow, something like that. This is quinacridone gold, which is looking a little bit beaten up. I might have to replenish that. And this is potter's pink, which is a lovely granulating pink, which I'll probably use for the sand dunes. Six colors maximum, that's all we normally use. And I've also got a large palette to mix on. Get rid of that, that's my test sheet. 
Um, this is my butcher's palette here where I've got lots of space to mix my colours up. I've cleaned it uh, yesterday, more or less, but by the time I finish doing this painting, there'll be lots of colours there, which I will actually use. So that's that. And uh, let's put the camera back on the piece of paper and get back to the job in hand. Now, try and get this straight. Otherwise, the editing staff will be cross with me. Oh, don't tell me it's going to rain again. Yes, I think it is. Oh, well, sorry if there's some background noise. OK, so let's grab a pencil and um, let's... We're working... Oh, I forgot to say, I'm working in my Gift from the Sea series here, my Anne Mora Lindbergh um, uh, notebook here, uh, sketchbook, which I've been filling with various different paintings. All of these are available as, um, what do you call them, uh, sketches on the website, dianantoncom for free. And obviously they've all got videos. And today I've decided to give in and pretend it's summer. So about, I'm going to do this vignette style, so I'm not taping off the edges because I'm not going to paint to the edge. And about two thirds of the way up, I'm going to put a horizon line, which I'm going to attempt to do parallel to the top of the paper, like that. And then I'm going to draw in <clears throat> a sand dune shape like that, and then another one like that. And I'm going to make the effort to correct myself here. I see I've got a parallel line and we don't want that. So this one is going to go up steeper and I think I'm going to take that up quite a lot higher and then bring it down sharply like that. And this one is just going to be on the edge there. So we'll just rub that out. And then we'll want something in the foreground down here. Like that. And then the boat, or the boats, we're going to put them here in the distance. Something like that. And so then the first thing to do really before I do anything else is to mask out those little triangles which, which make up the boat. You don't have to mask them out. You could use um, you could use wax, do wax resist on there. And they don't have to be perfect by any means. <clears throat> or you could just paint around them or you could put them on afterwards using white gouache. If you decided you wanted to put boats on at the last minute and you haven't thought about it in advance. And um, what am I doing? Okay, so that's the line of the sea. So we're going to have to have the land down here somehow. And it's going to be coming across like that. And then down here in this big space, we'll have a sort of bunch of flowery type things as we go along. So that's... This is where the sea is. And maybe I might just put one or two little lines of wax. I don't suppose that will really make a massive amount of difference. Okay, and right, so I don't know whether that's going to dry. It's not quite 
quite dry yet. So we'll have to turn, I'll turn you off for a second, come back when that's completely dry and we'll start the sky. And just while I'm waiting for that to dry, I just thought maybe it might be quite a nice idea to draw in a, a rickety old fence along here, just to give a little bit more interest in the foreground. Something like that, we'll put some grass growing up around it, just for the fun of it. Don't know if it really needs three lines of wire. Let me see how that goes when we start. And then over here we will have some grasses. And we'll have some grasses here. And then there'll be grass on here. We'll just see how it goes. I expect that's probably dry enough now. So we'll start off with the sky. And you can do this wet on dry or wet on wet. I think I'm going to just paint it wet on dry and I'm going to use cobalt blue. And I'm just going to lightly pop in the, the blue and leave some gaps for, um, <clears throat> for, for sort of Im imaginary clouds. Come down to the horizon line. Just let, I like to leave the sky nice and active as if there was um, a wind blowing, if you see what I mean. And um, so I wouldn't touch that again, even if you feel that it's not dark enough, and it probably won't be, but wait for it to dry completely before you put in another layer of paint, because if you go back into it while it's wet, it will be ruined. Even if you think you've got a little mistake or something, it won't be anything like the sort of mistake you'll have if you go in again. So then I'm going to use Caribbean blue for the sea. Seems appropriate because I sort of feel as if this is Caribbean and I'm gonna hope that I've put enough masking fluid there. So we'll just paint the sea in like that. I remember I put a bit of wax re resist in there to give me a little bit of a little bit of um, foam on the waves. And it doesn't matter if it runs a little bit into the sky. Just pretend that you forgot to put your glasses on that day. And we'll bring that down there. And then we need some very a sandy colour and let's pretend we're in the Bahamas and that the sand is pink rather than yellow. So we just do that and then we're going to put some shadow, the same kind of thing, on one side of our sand dune. So just bring that down roughly like that. And we leave that to sort of dry. Um, and then once that's dry, then we can come in and do some um, greenery. So I'm just going to paint in the distance here a little bit of land so far in the distance. And we probably want 
little bit of this shadowy color here as well. Try to remember not to paint to the edge. As I said, I wouldn't. Okay, so the mixtures for the greens. Um, quinacridone gold mixed with some blue. And we'll just pop that in here for the sort of grassy top of the sand dune, keeping it loose with gaps. And then we want a little bit down here as well, I think. And then perhaps another patch here. We're going to let that dry a little bit. And um, the cobalt blue, a little bit of pink makes it a nice gray. So we'll put some more strong sun cast shadow coming down the side of the dune. Something like that. And then maybe we want a bit over here. Let's pretend the sun's coming this way. So we'll put the cast shadows of the uh, fence posts which are going to be something like a brownish kind of colour. So uh, Potter's Pink mixed with Conacridone Gold is going to give us a nice light brownish colour. Vary the colour so they're not all the same. Okay, and I'm working with quite a big brush as you can see here. And then I'm going to be mixing up a bit more of a greeny color. Let's try Caribbean with quinacridone to give us a nice bright green. I'll drop a little bit of that in from place to place. Uh, bay grape. Lots of interesting colours. We can put in some purple too. Okay, and uh, maybe this needs some stems. Okay. 
Okay, so I'm going to um, add some more blue to the sky for two reasons. One, I didn't really go over the boats properly, so we need to darken that down so the sails stand out. And secondly, because as I said, it always dries back much lighter. And I'm not doing I'm not doing what you might call a realistic sky, but what I'm doing is the impression of a windy day. That's the idea anyway, so that's that. Um, and I might darken the colour of the sea line a little bit along there. as well. Um, now, uh, what should I do next? Maybe I'll do a little bit of pink spatter. It's a little bit of potter's pink. I'm going to just put some spatter on the sand here and also in the foreground. And then I'm going to grab a rigger and put in some grasses in the foreground too. So quinacridone gold, and a dash of cobalt blue. There's always a tendency when you're doing this kind of thing to overdo it. And, you know, well, you know what I mean. I'm trying, this is the first painting of the day, so I'm trying to uh, remember everything I ever knew about painting, and one of which things is less is more. is the patch of green that I'm working on. Somebody asked me in one of the comments yesterday what colour green I used and um, I mix most of my greens, to be honest, from cobalt and quinacridone and sometimes olive green, sometimes Windsor green, but I've usually got a kind of patch of colour. on my palette. Dry grasses, trying to do fine, a few fine grasses, praying that the sky is dry, I think it is.
need a bit of uh, shadow on one side of these posts, don't we? So that's the green mixed with Potter's pink. Which gives us quite a soft dark. Which we need, we need a dark green, which I'm just trying to drop in for these grasses here. And then maybe a little bit more of the pinkish. And we've got the boats here and I need to rub that out, but that's not dry yet, so. and put that nice dark line in that you always get on the horizon in the Caribbean. Incredible. Unrealistic looking, but still, that's the way it is. Okay, that will probably do for a minute. So I'm going to let that dry and then I'll rub out the, the white for the sails and we'll see what happens then. So I've added a little bit of green grass there um, because it seemed to need it. And now I'm looking for my rubber to see whether I can rub out this masking fluid. So there we are, there's one boat. That seems to have worked okay. Fingers crossed for this one. Too bad. Okay, so those are all right. I just need to get a, a small brush. Let's see what I've got here. So a little size two. Um, let's, what color shall we do the hulls? Um, sort of dark blue, I think. And just a tiny stroke. Doesn't need any more than that. One or two little darks here and there to sort of just bring the whole thing to life. And I think that's probably about it. You could play around with it a lot more. Um, you could uh, straighten up the lines on the fence if you wanted to, make that a little bit more organised. But I think basically that's all I want to do now. So there we are. There's a beach scene. Um, and there have been a few techniques there for you to think about using. And I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, please give us a like and subscribe. And I will see you again soon. So happy painting, everyone. Happy painting. <laughs>